What is going on everybody? Happy New Year. I know it's been a long, long time since I've done a video um, at all. And obviously most of y'all know why that is. Um, but today we're back out at the truck and we're gonna be doing some work. So what's gonna happen today is we're gonna be adding, like I said, um, 10 lights. So we're gonna be getting four here in the grill. There'll be one up in the corner, one down there, one there and one there. They'll flash in an X pattern. We have the lights and the air cleaners, which we're going to completely rewire and adjust the flash pattern on. Then we're gonna be adding three lights on the sides that people at intersections will be able to see. And obviously, you know, we've got our lights up there and the lights on the trailer. So um, like I said, we'll be adding three here, three on the other side, which is six, and the four up on the grill. So that'll be 10 total lights that we're adding. Um, and we're gonna kind of take you through the process. We've got to run to Home Depot, get, um, get some things, uh, some brackets, some hardware. Um, and then when we come back, I'll kind of show you what we have and then we'll just get started on the installation process. So um, these emergency lights are pretty easy to install. Uh, you just gotta take your time in wiring them. And uh, like I said, we'll take you through that and we'll, we'll see how it turns out in the end. So stay tuned. All right guys, so here we are, Home Depot. Um, just got finished picking up all the hardware we're at. well actually pops is inside we forgot our actual flat brackets that we're going to need um so he's inside getting those so like i said we're going to be installing 10 of these lights these are the phoenix industries um t3 surface mount uh led light heads and all amber um all 10 of them are the same um I mean, it's a pretty simple install. These the emergency wiring is pretty easy. You know, you've got your power, your ground, and your flash pattern select and your sink wire. So um, we got, you know, a big 200 foot roll of wire. So we're, it'll all be real clean. It's going into a big weatherproof junction box and then it will all be um, integrated with our um, lighting and siren controller that's already in the truck that obviously doesn't have a siren on it, but um, already operates our other emergency lights. So, um, as soon as he gets done grabbing the brackets, um, we will get back to the truck and we'll lay out everything. Um, we will bench test and sync all the wires um, prior to installing them on the truck. Once the flash patterns are set, the lights are synced, then we will install them all run all the wiring, connect it all to a power for a final, final time, and uh, then we'll turn it on and see if we mess anything up. All right, guys, so I've shown you the lights that we've got and where we're planning on putting them. Now I'm gonna go through um, how we plan on doing that. Uh, I also want to be really upfront with pricing. Um, that way, if you guys are planning on doing a, a project like this, you'll know what you're getting yourself into as far as how much these things cost. So. Um, obviously the two lights on the air cleaner we already had those are Phoenix Phoenix lights as well um, these lights the Phoenix the Phoenix fusion t3s they cost a right about $20 a piece um, and I will place a link in the description below where I got them from the company was great they got them to me like I think it was two days so they shipped the next morning and they were there the next day so that was really awesome um, so those are the lights you've seen those uh, it's we just had to go, you know, we went to Home Depot, we had to get a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff. We've got um, various hardware to mount them up to the grill. We went and got some random steel plates that, you know, these are the, like the back side of an electrical junction box that you would like use in your house or something. Um, this will get cut down to size, the light will get mounted to it, and then it will get flush, it will get epoxied under the cab of the truck and just kind of sit like that. So um, that's how that's gonna work. You know, we bought 500 feet of, of wire, which we probably didn't need to buy that much, but really they didn't have any other options. Um, this is uh, 18 gauge three wire. So it's three wires inside of a um, protective sheath. And that'll be really good for keeping it organized and neat as we run the wires uh, across the truck through the frame and everything. Um, so at the end of it, all the wiring is gonna end up going into one of these little plastic junction boxes. Now this thing is a weather sealed junction box. Um, all of our main connections will be inside this cap once it comes off. Um, our main power and ground will come up through here and then all the, all the wires from the, 
all the uh, brown wire from the lights will go get fed into here, connections made, and then this stuff will be siliconed up and completely weatherproof. So, and then that'll just get mounted to the frame somewhere, and that'll be that. Um, so I think that's about it. We spent, I think it was like $118 at Home Depot for the junction box, um, all the brackets, the, you know, epoxy, the, the, all the stuff, the wire. Um, and then it was about $290 total for the lights. That's for the 10 lights plus tax and then um, them being sent here. So, so you're right about the $400 range is what we're looking at for this project costing us. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's it, it, You can do it all with stuff you get from Home Depot aside from the lights that you have to buy. Um, but it'll really be beneficial and uh, hopefully you guys will see that this um, this was a, a good addition to our emergency lighting setup and that it, um, that it definitely serves a purpose. This isn't just some uh, novelty lights we're throwing on. So anyways, we are uh, getting ready to lay everything out. We're gonna get these wires hooked up to power. We're gonna start bench testing and setting flash patterns on all the lights and determining which light's gonna go where. Uh, once we determine where they're gonna go, we can determine uh, what their flash pattern will be and what mode we need to set them in. And I will go through that with you a little bit as we start doing that. Um, but we will cross that when, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. So. Um, we will see y'all in just a minute. So before I get too into wiring, um, I don't know how many of y'all have actually seen the tour of the truck back in the day when we installed this um, siren and lock, or this, it's technically a siren and lighting controller, but we don't, obviously don't have a siren. So the battery power comes into here and then this position switch provides three separate outputs for power, okay? So the first power output that we ran runs are lights on the headache rack so if i were to poke this outside you're going to be looking right in the sun but you can see that our overhead lights are running right but the cleaner lights are off so if i add this second switch that will turn on the air cleaner lights and then the third switch currently does nothing but we already ran the wire for it when we initially installed that thing, we ran this wire back to the truck because we had intended on later adding more lights. So that power wire has already been ran. So that's how our power is going to get to the lights. I just wanted to um, preface this whole installation by starting that out. So when we flip this to position three, that green light will then have power, at which point we'll be able to power those lights. Now, how I plan on installing this is... How I plan on wiring it, I guess I should say, is position one will remain with just the top lights. Position two will activate all of our front lighting. So the two cleaner lights and the four lights in the grill will be operated off of the slide switch position two. Once we activate position three, that will activate the six lights on the side of the truck. So we'll have a progressive slide switch and a progressive lighting pattern so that if we don't need all of the lights, you know, if we're parked on the side of the road waiting on a police escort and we don't need to blind everybody, we can back it down to like position one and just run our overhead lights. But if we need the side lighting or if we need the front lighting because we're on the interstate or something, we can do that and we can kind of take um, tailor our lighting system to what is needed for the traffic conditions, road conditions, stuff like that. So just wanted to throw that in there before we got started because I know I would forget to inform y'all like how the power got run and how that was all set up. So now we're gonna get back to bench testing and all that stuff um, and we'll be back with you once we start installing and set, or once we start setting flash patterns, so. All right guys, so I swore when we set this up that we had connected slide switch three already. However, we were intending on having to have a backup alarm in this truck. Um, so instead of doing position three, because we never intended to use that, we had set up an additional wire. That wire in the back was set up to this switch right here for a backup alarm. Um, we were gonna initially do that for OSHA reasons, but we, we didn't. Um, so what we have now, um, 
is, is a bit of a mess. Okay, so clearly we had to uninstall like the radio thing. This really isn't that much. Um, it looks bad. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Really, it's just um, a screw here, a screw. I think this one was there on the pop off this light. There's another screw. And then you just have to take down the radio mount and then this whole roof thing drops down. What we are looking for here, if you look at the controller right, you see mode one, two, and three. So this is called a slide position switch. So this is actually position one, two, and three. So there are three separate positions on this switch. So it, on this controller, it's technically position eight, position nine, and position 10. Now we already have power run for position eight and nine, so clearly we're looking for position 10. Um, this, These instructions make it very, very easy. I simply look down here, wire number 10 will be white level three, which means it's a 12 gauge white wire. But even easier, if I look at this harness that comes from the uh, sound off factory, it's, it's numbered, right? So if I look here at this white wire, number 10, that means that's the third position of the slide switch. That means this is the wire here that carries the power for position three on the slide switch. But we've never needed this switch. So simply all we're gonna do, which is gonna be a real simple solution, is we're gonna take this wire that we already have connected to power. This green wire comes down here to another output, this purple output. We're just gonna simply cut this here, attach this green wire that's already run to the wire that needs the power here, and then we will have power back there like we intended. All right, y'all, it's a moment of truth. Three. So here's that green wire that we just attached to. I've already got power running to it. Boom. All right, guys, so inside of the truck's all cleaned up. Now it's time to get to the bench test. Um, so like I said earlier, these, these lights are pretty simple. They've got three wires, a red, a black, and a blue. So red, clearly power, black, ground, blue is your flash pattern select and your sync wire. We'll go ahead and connect that. Then we'll connect our power. And we have the light blinking. So if we take the blue wire and attach it to ground momentarily, it'll change the flash pattern, right? So the first thing I have to do is put this into master mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blue wire, attach it to ground, and I'm gonna hold it for three seconds. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a common flash pattern. Okay, that's a common flash pattern. I can find that on all the other lights. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this blue wire to ground for three seconds. It will either turn the light off or all three of those lights will burn steady. Okay, so that means that this light currently is set in slave mode. When are they gonna bring slavery back? I'm tired of looking for work, anybody? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it again, hold it for three seconds, and that will set this to master mode. Okay, <clears throat> so now this thing is in master mode and it knows what flash pattern it's on. It's on the steady one. And I'm going to take the other light that I have with blue and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, black goes to ground. Red goes to power. All right, and now we will cycle through until we find that same flash pattern. Now, because I want this one in the X pattern to flash at the same time as the other light, I'm gonna also set this to a master light. So one, two, three, it stays off. That means it's in slave mode. Now, if I left this in slave mode, what you'll notice is that both these lights are gonna be on the same flash pattern, but because one's master and because one's slave, they will alternate flashing each other. <laughs> What's going on in the world? They're college girls and they're wild, they've gone wild. Right. Now, because they're both set to the same flash pattern, all I have to do is take these and connect it to ground and they will both cycle through um, different flash patterns. Now, what we want for the X pattern is for them to blink at the same time. So in order to do that, I have to take that one light and set it to master mode, at which point they will blink at the same time. All right, guys, so we set the 
as I was explaining, the blues are the ones that were set to master and the ones without the tape were set to slave. So we've connected everything together. We've got them all in a similar flash pattern. And then now you see the X pattern that I was talking about. Um, we did run into a small issue. This one is a white light. Uh, we put it to power and it started blinking light, white and we were like, what the hell? But um, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna play with some flash patterns, see which ones work best for us. Um, but we'll get, we'll get it up and get it together and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so we're about to lose some sunlight here, but um, we have the front half of the truck. Everything is lit or everything is um, mounted. And we've got the four lights on the front of the bumper or on the front of the grill. I don't know if you'll be able to see them from down there. We also took out the lights on the air cleaners, but the lights in our cleaners, they're epoxied in. This one had actually come loose. So we had to uh, re-epoxy it and then rewire it. So I took them both out, put them on the bench, re reset those to a different flash pattern that'll go well with our front lights. Um, so the wiring setup that we have, in here you can see those two posts. Each of those two posts are um, the mounting posts for the lights. So the lights come through Obviously, um, a portion of the wire goes into some wire loom, and then it's in a protected area over there, down to the next light, where that wire joins, runs across to right there. Now on this side, you have the same thing, the wire comes through the grate, into some wire loom, runs down to where it's protected and secured, runs into here. Now everything, all four wires, for the lights join together here um, oh, and then they come out they run through this loom here which runs up way back here this is it still runs down all the wires still neatly tucked in the loom then it drops down right there into our junction box um, and then our cleaner lights uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see there's a wire loom right there coming across from that other air cleaner and they come down and they join in right here uh, which will also still these are just kind of held in here for now but they'll also have wire loom on them so everything will be completely hidden with the exception of that silver or gray junction box um, we're gonna get back all we've got to do now is make the final connections attach it to power throw it all on test it uh, dark or not you guys will see a test of this to see how it all looks so finally got to turn them on Needless to say, we know what we're doing.